Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company and thank you so much for stopping by. I have so many fun DIYs for you today that are definitely kind of Easter, but maybe not what you were expecting. We are using vintage book pages for all of these DIYs. So grab a seat, sit back, get comfortable, and let's get started. I would be so grateful if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know every time we upload a video. Okay, so first up today, guys, we are making a magnolia wreath. We've all seen them and I think we all love them. And I was determined that I could do this on my own. So I was kind of excited to try it with some book pages. Now I've cut out a ton. I just kind of guessed at the size there was no science involved here um, and I'm using an old copy of Pride and Prejudice I picked up at my restore because I liked that the pages were already a little bit yellowed and there was not going to be anything offensive there with Wickham and Mr. Darcy. I did decide to cover my wreath so that none of that green would show through and oh my goodness it's a good thing I sped this up because that took way too long. Now I decided that my magnolia leaves were a little flat and non-dimensional so I scrunched them. Yes, I. there's no better way to describe what I did. I scrunched them. I just gently squeezed them in my hands to try and give them a little bit of dimension. So I did have my inspiration pick just above me so I could kind of see how to put these on. And of course it was the actual Magnolia as in the silos, as in Fixer Upper, as in Chip and Joanna. And that was my inspiration while I was working on this. So I worked my way all the way around the wreath and I just wasn't happy with it. It just lacked something. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I actually thought of leaving it, but I wanted this to be great, so I ripped it apart. Now, I'm going to show you my inspiration so you can see why I was looking for something with a bit more dimension, and this really helped me figure out what I was doing wrong. Now, check out the price of this baby, and remember that that price is in US dollars, so in Canada, I'm going to pay a lot more for that, and I'm going to pay a whole bunch for shipping. The first thing I did was I trimmed one side of the leaves down so that the leaves were a bit narrower. Then I scored them down the middle just with my fingers and folded up the end. And I was hoping that this would help them sit up a little bit. So I just went through and I did that with all of them. And you can just see how much smaller the leaf is. And this was a result. It was the result that I was looking for. Check this out. started putting these on and you can see as well as I did that this is so much better. Are you loving it? Doesn't it look like the real deal? I am thinking of so many different ways I could do this. I am thinking of so many different ways I can use a magnolia wreath. So I popped in a popsicle stick. Sorry, I couldn't help it um, because I am going to add another small element to this and I needed a little bracing across the back there because it wouldn't show otherwise. Now, do you remember last video when I started painting this little bunny and I had so many comments of people laughing thinking I was painting a real chocolate bunny. You guys are absolutely hilarious. Keep those comments coming. I am so incredibly entertained by them and I have had so much fun responding to them. So anyway, I'm painting my little bunny from the dollar store and I'm gonna go back and I'm going to wet distress him. So when the paint is dry to the touch, 
I'm actually using a baby wipe. I keep these on hand so I can clean my hands off when I'm working in here. And I'm just going to rub off so we can see some of the details. This is one of those moments where I rubbed off a tiny bit and I was like, okay, I'm done. And I was like, mm, maybe just a little bit more detail. And I did that and I was like, okay, I'm done. And then I flipped him over and did the other side and I got a little carried away and it was like, ooh, I like the way he looks now. So we used that side. Now to cover my popsicle stick, because it is going to show a little bit, I'm going to use some of this moss tape from the Dollar Tree. It's not terribly sticky, so I'm going to use my glue gun to put it down. And that's going to give my bunny a nice place to hang out in my magnolia wreath. And I'm thinking I can change this out and put so many different things in there throughout the course of the year. Isn't that going to be fun? Now, once I had my bunny in there, he looked lonely and just not quite right, if that makes any sense. So I had some of these moss stones from Dollar Tree and I added them in there. I don't know if you caught that, but I filled one of those moss stones with hot glue and dropped it on my hand. There were bad words, I guarantee it. Now look at my magnolia wreath with my cute little bunny. I absolutely love this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to hang it in my kitchen window because I think it's going to be perfect. DIY number two is going to be quick, easy, and fun. I took a couple of the pages from my Pride and Prejudice copy and I printed this vintage bunny right on top. And we are basically going to put it in this frame, but we're going to paint it and put it in this frame except we're not because I didn't realize this frame had a clip and that's not gonna work for how I want this to look and I'm pretty sure I can't get it off without ruining it, but that's okay, cause Lisa's stash to the rescue. Snap your fingers, ta-da. We have so many frames here, it's not even funny and I thought these ones would look super cute and I feel like I can replicate the other frame in kind of a neat way with these ones. So take them completely apart, take the glass out and be very careful you guys because Dollar Tree glass is thin. I have cut myself on it more times than I care to admit. I'm gonna pull out the little supports and these frames are actually foam. So if you just wiggle gently, they come out really easy. Now all I have to do is trim my little, I'm calling him a book page bunny. I'm calling all these guys book page bunnies. So I'm just gonna trim him on my paper trimmer and we're gonna pop him in the frame and this is gonna look super cute. Bet you thought that was it. Well, it's not. I'm gonna do a little bit of wet distressing to bring back a little bit of the metallic that's underneath here. And then I'm gonna do something, I kid you not, I have never done before. I have a package of gold leaf in the drawer here and I've never used it because I am completely intimidated by it. But I figured it's Dollar Tree frame. I have more, sadly. And embarrassingly and if it doesn't work I'll just get out a couple more frames and paint them so I'm taking a little bit of my Mod Podge and I'm just gonna tap it on I'm not putting it on in a, any sort of thorough way I am tapping it on so it's going to create a really irregular look with the gold leaf now what I do know about gold leafing is your glue has to be really tacky. So that glue had actually been sitting there for a bit so I could go right in with my gold leaf and put it on. If I was trying to do this in a really professional way, I would have wanted to get like a full sheet out of the package, but that wasn't what I was going for. I wanted something kind of really modern and irregular and check it out. I am absolutely in love with this and you are going to see this again. I remember watching episodes of Debbie Travis's show years ago and some of it must have stuck. I remembered soft brush, tap it in, brush the excess away. So I was just literally working from memory and I can't tell you how happy I am with the way this frame came out. I don't think it's too much. 
I think it's just enough. Then I put a couple of dots of glue in the one frame, which would be the back, put my glass in. I'm using a couple of dots of my Dollar Tree glue stick to put in the bunny. And you'll see that he kind of floats in there. So you'll be able to see right through this frame. Then I take the other piece of Dollar Tree glass, glue it in and put the top frame, well, on top. And I love the way this came out. I think it's gonna be really pretty. It's a little bit non-traditional for Easter, but I was really feeling non-traditional Easter this year. Now, if you're into traditional Easter, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. We have another video coming up that's gonna have all kinds of fun stuff in it. In the meantime, this dude, pretty sure he's going in my bedroom because, I don't know, he's just a little bit cheeky and I kinda like him. So you guys know I love farmhouse books and I just discovered that these old romance novels are even cheaper at the thrift store. So I grabbed myself a bunch of these because I just wanted a cute stack to use for Easter. Now because the covers are a little bit mm, terrifying and very bright, I ripped them all off and I'm using a little bit of the Dollar Tree burlap just to cover the spine. So you know, I've got that kind of cute farmhouse look and it goes with the neutral theme that's right through this video. So I went ahead and repeated that for all three books and then we're going to do the fun part and start embellishing these. I have this wide burlap unwired ribbon I actually got at the thrift store and I think it's absolutely perfect for what I wanna do here. I am gonna wrap it all the way around the books, but before I do that, I am gonna fray those edges good. I think it's really gonna to add to the look that we have going here. So we'll trim that off, get it all glued down, and then I have some really cute and a little bit different idea for this stack of books. Hey, you guys, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram and Facebook. That's at Lisa and Company, and you're going to see all kinds of weird stuff. I don't do haul videos, but I like to show little hauls. You guys have been talking about the blue and white plates from the last video like crazy, and I did a little uh, Dollar Tree video the other day showing where they were in the store and that my store had just restocked them. So I have this really cute ticking stripe ribbon from Dollar Tree, of course, and I'm going to wrap that twice around, but not in a messy twice around. I want to create two bands on here because you can see those really pretty wooden buttons. I'm going to use those. Now you guys, those buttons are from my mom's button bag. Those buttons are probably almost as old as I am, and I'm stopping there. We're not talking about how old those buttons actually are. I've told you what I'm going to tell you, but I'm pretty sure based on the label and the font and the discoloration on that card that, yeah, those buttons are old.
Now you guys have fun with this. Use whatever you have, use whatever suits you. I had this one uh, greenery bush from Dollar Tree and I used a really small amount of it because I didn't want to overwhelm this smaller stack of books, but I really felt like it needed something. If you've been following along here for a while, you know I'm not a really big bow person. I didn't want to put twine on it. I kind of went back and forth and I just loved the sort of grayed out leaf on this and then the two different styles of leaf with that little bit of yellow tint on there. Totally love it but use what you've got, use what's in your stash, and use what suits you. Now I wanted to make a tag for this and I had taken out some little wooden letters to spell out Easter, but looking at this little farmhouse stack, I thought, you know what, this is gonna work in the fall, this could work at Christmas, and I didn't wanna make it too specific. So we kiboshed the Easter letters, and I'm just gonna take one of my printed out little tiny vintage bunnies and use that. Now you guys, these are such a pain to cut out, but you know what, they are totally worth it. I have these teeny tiny little scissors from Dollar Tree and it's not too, too bad. However, I'm not gonna show you how I cut it out cause I like you guys more than that. Once I had them cut out and I did a really close trim job, I'm using my Dollar Tree glue stick. Then I did some antiquing wax and I think this looks really pretty all done. And now that you guys can see it up close, you know what I mean, right? We could use this so many other times of the year. Now this one actually belongs in one of my super cheap, quick and easy videos, cause that's what it is. It's a different kind of bunny. It's actually the one on that other tag, printed out onto another one of the book pages from Pride and Prejudice. I'm going to go ahead and use my Dollar Tree glue stick. That is a canvas from an old pro uh, project and it's just black paint. It's not chalkboard, it's literally just flat black paint. I don't even remember what I used it for, but I told you guys I'm trying to use stuff from my stash. And so far, success. Now I've got that stuck down and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use a tiny little bit of antiquing wax and that's a doll uh, Dollar Tree diaper wipe again because I find it really helps move it around. I just saw someone do this on their video and I apologize because I can't remember who it was and I totally wanna give them credit, but using the diaper wipe is a genius move because it stops it from just sticking and staying there. The moisture on the wipe just keeps that wax moving. And isn't he cute? I almost feel like some of these cute vintage bunnies need like cute vintage names. What do you think? Tell me down in the comments what we should name these guys. Now this dollar store bunny was supposed to be my favorite and easiest project. I picked him up at Dollarama and all I was gonna do was Mod Podge him with book pages. Well, a couple of things happened here. Um, this paper turned out to be a little bit better quality than I expected it to be and putting it on the bunny and making it bend to the shape was just not working well. So I ended up doing a couple of different things to make it work. Now, especially when I was getting up near his face and around his ears, there was no way, no matter how small the pieces were, that it was working. So I decided that if I wet the paper, it might make it softer and more malleable and easier to use. So I took Izzy's mister, how cute is that, that she uses for her plants because I thought that would put down a nice, even spray on the paper without soaking it, but making it nice and damp and hopefully working better with the Mod Podge. And it did. And I was trying to remember all those years I Mod Podged things with my mom, what was different. And I think the bottom line is we just always used thin tissue-like paper and thin materials. 
my mom was so into Mod Podge for a while. She's going to kill me for telling you guys this story, but she Mod Podged everything. We got ornaments for Christmas. I had a picture frame that she made me and she'd used like cutouts from magazines. She was like the Mod Podge queen. Sorry, mom. Anyway, back on track, it worked. When I was finished, I gave the entire bunny one more coat of Mod Podge so that it would even everything out and hold them all together. Now check him out. All I did was place him in a pedestal ball. Wow, pedestal bowl with a whole bunch of these moss balls from Dollar Tree. Have you guys seen them? Do you know, think of all the times we burned our fingers making moss balls and now we can buy them for a buck 25. Now, you guys know I love a good trash to treasure, and we just made chili, so we had a lot of cans. So I painted this one black. I didn't bother to show you, because come on, you've seen me paint things before. Now, I'm going to cut out from one of my book pages, and I just had that oval shape kicking around in my stash. So I used that to do that. Cut out another bunny, but I actually thought I would show you how I did it this time and how well the teeny tiny dollar store scissors work. I used my glue stick to put him on and now I'm going to Mod Podge him right onto my can. Now the can is painted with my homemade chalk paint that I'm still using and that's from several videos ago. Uh, put a little Mod Podge on the back here, put him on the can and I only had one issue with it. There was one place where I was holding the can that some of that paint came off on my thumb. Now, to be fair, I really hadn't let the paint cure very long. I hit it with my hair dryer because I really wanted to get this done. So I put a pretty generous coat of Mod Podge on it to help soften up the paper. And then you'll see I use my finger to really make it sit down in the ridges on the can. I thought it would look way better if it was kind of had that wavy texture to it. You can see there. And then what I did off camera was put an entire coat of Mod Podge on the entire can just to make sure I was sealing in that chalk paint and that this would stand the test of time. Now, I don't know you guys, is he a Cecil or a Basil? Don't say Peter, that's too obvious. But I feel like these dudes need names. And last up, you guys know I love these Dollar Tree candles and Easter would not be complete without one. So I'm going to take, you guessed it, some book pages and a printed out vintage bunny or a group of printed out vintage bunnies and apply them to this candle. Now I've actually stuck two pages together and now I'm gonna pleat them kind of like a fan when you were a kid that you made it just so that when it's on here, it has a little bit more texture and dimension. To make it fit better, I actually sliced the entire thing in half, stuck together, and this way it wraps around the entire candle. To make those pleats hold their shape, I'm just going to put a tiny little dot of hot glue at the corner of each one and press them down. So I have my little teeny tiny row of vintage bunnies all cut out. Look at all those ears. No, I was not going to make you watch that. Now I'm just going to apply those to my pleated paper with my glue stick and we're going to apply those right onto the candle. I added a tiny little bit of twine and tied it around the top and then I used another one of those old wooden buttons from my mom's button bag and put it right on top of where the twine came together. I think it looks so pretty and I love it when there's a flow from project to project or for a whole grouping of them and this little button did the trick for me.
So I am totally in love with my neutral bunny vintage book DIYs that I've just done for Easter. I love that they're not in your face Easter and just love the way that these guys came together. Thank you guys for stopping by Lisa and company. I really appreciate all the amazing comments we're getting down under the videos. Keep it up. I love chatting with you guys and we'll see you next time at Lisa and company.